The Department of the Interior and Local Government, Central Luzon, presents this series of instructional videos as part of the formulation and updating of LGU Comprehensive Development Plans. In this segment, we will learn about how to conduct a Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment, or CCVA. Climate Change Vulnerability Assessment assesses the locality's vulnerabilities to various climate-related stimuli. We define vulnerability as the degree to which a system is susceptible to or unable to cope with adverse effects of climate change, including climate variability and extremes. As a tool, CCVA uses a qualitative approach in establishing the level of vulnerability of identified areas or sectors of interest. Qualitative research involves collecting and analyzing non-numerical data to understand concepts, opinions, or experiences such as how people experience the world. It is the opposite of quantitative research which involves collecting and analyzing numerical data for statistical analysis. Some of the most common qualitative methods are observations, interviews, focus group discussions, surveys, and secondary research. Vulnerability of the system to the expected climate stimulus is the interplay of exposure sensitivity, and adaptive capacity. The outputs involved in this section are CCVA summary decision areas and issues matrix, and CCVA vulnerability assessment map. These are the processes that we need to undergo in order to achieve the desired goals identify the system of interest, climate stimuli and impact area, determine exposed units, conduct a sensitivity analysis, and numerate the potential impacts and rate the degree of impact, evaluate and rate the adaptive capacity, compute for the vulnerability index, prepare a vulnerability assessment map, and identify decision areas, issues, matrix. Before we go to CCBA, let me first discuss with you the second and third components of our exposure database that you need to prepare in order to properly accomplish this step. I am referring to the sensitivity and adaptive capacity attributes. The exposure database comprises of exposure, sensitivity, and adaptive capacity information. The table shows the data and information needed for the population exposure database. Allow me to explain a bit about the requirements for sensitivity and adaptive capacity information. For population sensitivity, it is recommended to determine the wall construction materials, dependent population, persons with disabilities, early warning system, informal settler households, local awareness, access to infrastructure-related mitigation measures, employment, income below poverty threshold, education and literacy rate. The best source for this is the CBMS because these are the information included in the household interview. And you can also use the household maps to only include those that are exposed to a particular hazard. You may also obtain some of this information from the PSA census, but you can only get the total of the barangay or LGU level. You can simply do a ratio and proportion to get an estimate. Another way is to hold focus group discussions with key offices and barangays who may have conducted some studies or are familiar with these types of information. 
this is an example of a population sensitivity table. You will notice that for every sensitivity indicator, such as percentage of informal settlers, you need to identify how many households, the rate or percentage, and the sensitivity score. The parameters for the score are in the upper part of the screen. You also have to input this information per barangay and per level of hazard susceptibility. The Tisud in their website provides an Excel file that has this table and it automatically computes the rate, score, and average score. For population adaptive capacity, you will determine the exposed households, access to financial assistance, access to information, capacity and willingness to retrofit or relocate, and government investments. Most likely, you have to ask from key offices and barangay personnel about this information. This is an example of a population adaptive capacity table which has a similar format and scoring parameters as the population sensitivity. Let's move on to the next, which is Urban Exposure Database. The sensitivity information of urban uses are building condition, wall construction materials, date of construction, area coverage to infrastructure-related mitigation measures, structure employing hazard mitigation design, and local awareness. This is an example of an urban use sensitivity table. The challenge in accomplishing this is that it is very seldom that LGUs will conduct an inventory of the buildings being used for commercial, industrial, and other private establishments. In the absence of such profiling, you may ask the help of the building official, zoning division, or a person in the barangay who has familiarity with the buildings in the area. The sensitivity scores for residential uses are different from non-residential urban structures. Adaptive capacity of urban uses are determined by the following indicators. Government regulations, capacity and willingness to retrofit or relocate, insurance coverage, available alternative sites, and government investments. This is a sample of the urban use adaptive capacity table the adaptive capacity scores for the first four indicators can be rated by using this guide. Indicator five and six can be rated as low, moderate, high, and very high, while indicator seven may use A, B, C, or D as scores according to these parameters. Third, we have the Natural Resource-Based Production Area Exposure Database. The information needed for sensitivity are access to early warning system, farmers and areas employing sustainable production techniques, local awareness and access to information, access to hazard mitigation measures and structures, irrigation coverage, and water impoundment. Here is an example of a natural resource-based production area sensitivity table. An accurate and updated agriculture map and agriculture profile will be of big help to accomplish this table. It is also best to consult your agriculture officer. You may use these parameters for the sensitivity score. There are four items under natural resource adaptive capacity. 
access to financing, alternative livelihood, government extension programs, and government infrastructure programs. In filling up the adaptive capacity score, you may use these parameters for indicators one to four, and this rating for indicator five and six. Let's move on to the fourth, which is the critical point facilities. You will notice that the sensitivity information is similar to urban uses. Wall construction materials, building condition, structure employing hazard mitigation design, date of construction, government regulations, and access to infrastructure-related mitigation measures. For the existing condition of building, you may rate it as excellent, good, fair, or poor. For proportion of dilapidated condition or made of light materials, the larger the percentage, the higher the sensitivity. For year constructed, you may use this as a guide for your scoring. The adaptive capacity information needed for critical point facilities are capacity and willingness to retrofit or relocate, insurance coverage, available alternative sites, available alternative structures, and government investments. In this sample table, you may use these parameters for indicators 1, 5, and 6 four indicators two and four, and four indicators three and seven. To obtain information on critical point facilities, it is best to ask for help from your building official and barangay personnel concerned. Lastly, let's take a look at the Lifeline Utilities Exposure Database. For sensitivity, you need to identify the construction materials used, condition, and whether the structure is employing hazard mitigation design. In accomplishing the column of surface type, you may use this parameter. For existing condition, use this guide. And for employing resilient design, answer yes or no. Observe that you need to do this for each road or street. You may be needing the help of the engineering office, zoning division, and barangay personnel. For adaptive capacity, you need information on insurance coverage, government infrastructure-related investment, and available redundant systems. Use these parameters for insurance coverage and government investments. After completing the exposure database, you can now proceed to the climate change vulnerability assessment. The first step in conducting the CCVA is to organize the climate exposure maps and tables which are already part of the exposure database. This is an example of a map showing urban uses that are exposed to sea level rise. And this is an example of a natural resource-based production areas exposed to temperature rise. Other climate stimuli are changes in seasonal rainfall and number of dry days. Aside from climate variables, you may also include hazards that are triggered by climate change, such as flood, rain-induced landslide, storm surge, and tsunami. After considering 
and organizing your exposure tables determine the degree of impact of each exposure unit per barangay using these parameters for scoring. Here you will see that there are three levels of degree of impact. High with a score of three, moderate with a score of two, and low with a score of one. This is an example of a flood hazard degree of impact table per barangay per exposure unit. In the same way, evaluate the adaptive capacity of each exposure unit per barangay using these parameters for scoring. This time, you have low with a score of three, moderate with a score of two, and high with a score of one. Then, determine the level of vulnerability by multiplying the degree of impact average score to the adaptive capacity average score per exposure unit. This is a suggested format of the vulnerability table. Finally, summarize all of your findings related to climate change vulnerability. First, identify the decision areas or priority areas in need of intervention due to its being moderately to highly prone to a particular climate change variable or hazard. Then, note the technical findings, which include the climate stimuli, and important details on exposure, sensitivity, and adaptive capacity information related to the decision area. Third, predict the implications if the existing situation is not addressed. And fourth, propose policy interventions and solutions that would address the existing vulnerabilities present in the decision areas. This is an example of a climate change vulnerability assessment summary matrix for population exposed to sea level rise.